five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off the Falcon 9. Go in a row L85. Stage one, chamber pressure is nominal. We're T plus 42 seconds into the NRO L85 mission. We heard that first call Power out. Power and telemetry nominal. And power and telemetry are nominal. We're now into the throttle down. Falcon 9 decreasing thrust to prepare for max Q, the highest amount of aerodynamic pressure. Vehicle supersonic. Falcon 9 going faster than the speed of sound. The Merlin engines have throttled back up to full power. Max Q. And now we're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure where the stresses are greatest on the Falcon 9. T plus one minute, 30 seconds. Everything continues to be nominal on Falcon 9. Trajectory looking good on the first stage. We should hear a call out here shortly. MVAC D chillin'. MVAC engine chill has begun. Getting the second stage engine ready for ignition coming up very shortly here. We're getting ready for main engine cutoff, stage separation. The first stage will head back to the launch site. The second stage will ignite and head to orbit. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. MVAC ignition. Stage one boost back startup. And there you've heard it. And we maybe even saw all those five events that happened back to back. Now currently on the screen, the first stage has begun its flip maneuver to reorient the nose back towards Vandenberg. And we have lit three Merlin engines. This is the boost back burn. The first of three burns the first stage will execute. This burn lasts a duration of about 48 seconds. Now, while the burns in progress, we'll also be having events on the second stage, but we may not be hearing those, and we won't be broadcasting second stage camera views at the request of our customer. Fairing separation confirmed. And we did hear fairing separation over the net. Boost back burn shutdown is coming up. Stage one boost back shutdown. Right on time, we've got shutdown of the three Merlin engines. We'll next be waiting to see the titanium grid fins begin their deploy now that the boost back burn is complete. And here come the fins. Pin pull is releasing and the four titanium grid fins beginning their slow deploy. We're coming up on four minutes into launch. Now with that boost back burn done, our first stage will be attempting its land landing in just uh, four minutes at T plus eight minute mark. We're now heading back to the launch and landing site at Slick 4, but you'll notice the first stage has continued to coast up to Apogee. You can see there on the screen, we've got the altitude and speed indicators of the first stage, 132 kilometers, and now we'll begin descending back down towards the Earth's atmosphere. Now there'll be two more burns of the first stage engines one will be the entry burn. That's the next one up. Again, where three of the Merlin engines will reignite the same three we just used on that boost back to head it back to Vandenberg. There's a view looking out of the inner stage on the first stage, second stage now gone, but that gives you an idea if you were sitting inside the inner stage what the view looks like out of it. There's a view. 
We're slowly getting some of the ocean in California clouds as the first stage continues to orient and head back towards the landing zone. Now the entry burn that I mentioned that'll be coming up, that'll be to help slow the stage down in preparation for entry Both back. vehicles are following nominal trajectories. We got a good call out there. Everybody's on nominal trajectories. You may be able to see on the right-hand side above that right grid fin that kind of whiter uh, squiggly line. I think that may be the contrail from the liftoff of the Falcon 9 as we're heading back right towards about that spot, 1,400 feet away from the liftoff. Now you can see the altitude decreasing. We're down to just inside the 100 kilometer point. Velocity is picking up again. The entry burn will light and that'll scrub off some of that speed. Now in the vacuum of space, you can see these white pulses. That's nitrogen gas from attitude control, control thrusters on the interstage. They're being used to orient and aim the launch vehicle first stage. These thrusters are up on the interstage near the top of the first stage. Now, right now, you can see the grid fins aren't doing anything, but once we get back into the atmosphere, look for them to begin moving because it's in the denser air that these fins provide that steering that we need of the vehicle during descent. Right now, we're waiting for the entry burn to begin. Stage one, entry burn, start up. We've heard start up. There's the center engine is lit. And now we've got two more engines up, changing the shape of the plume. Now, if you're watching the speed display, you'll notice the velocity is quickly coming down. Now, this burn will last about 21 seconds. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And we've got shutdown of the entry burn. And if you're watching that speed display, you'll notice we took out about half of the velocity of the first stage. We've still got one more burn to go, and that's the landing burn. Now, during the first stage landing burn, the center Merlin engine will relight and slow the vehicle down for its second landing attempt back on land, not too far from our launch site. Stage one, FTS is saved. Flight termination system on the first stage has now been saved. Landing burn coming up in about 10 seconds. Stage one is transonic. Stage two, FTS is saved. Stage one, landing burn. We've got landing burn. You see the grid fins beginning to operate. We need to come through the cloud deck for a view of landing zone four at the old Slick Four West at Vandenberg. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Are you from the ground camera? Landing legs deploying? Stage one landing confirmed. And as you see on your screen, the Falcon 9 first stage has successfully landed at our landing zone, making this the second consecutive landing for this booster. And it also marks our 114th overall successful recovery of a first stage booster. Now, since we just finished the landing of the first stage, at the request of our customer, we are concluding our webcast coverage early today. We want to thank the NRO and the U.S. Space Force for entrusting us with today's launch. And, of course, thank you to all of you for joining us and hope you'll all enjoy the rest of your weekend.